you and thanks to the ladies for their lovely ministry and song tonight and for bringing us to the most important place, and that's to the cross this evening. And I want you just for these last few moments to turn with me in your Bibles tonight, if you have a Bible with you. And we're turning for my text tonight into Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, please. And we're in 2 Corinthians tonight, chapter 5. 2 Corinthians. And we're in chapter 5 tonight. Away over in the Old Testament, there's a wee book there called the book of the prophet Amos. There in the fourth chapter, in the twelfth verse, you'll, fi you'll find there five solemn words that sounds a great alarm to every person tonight. The five words in Amos chapter 4 and verse 12 brings before us this great challenge tonight. They say, prepare to meet thy God. My dear unsaved friend tonight, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, whether you believe it or you don't believe it, that's one encounter that you're going to keep tonight. You're going to meet God. And I wonder tonight, have you ever paused and pondered concerning that moment when you'll stand before the Almighty when you will appear before your Maker, when you will stand before God tonight. It's one encounter where you're not going to escape. It's one encounter tonight you'll not abandon. And tonight, Amos 4 and 12 declares the great warning, prepare to meet thy God. You know, friend, the Bible tonight has a lot to say about God tonight, doesn't it? It has a lot to say concerning the love of God. John chapter 3, verse 16, so you can rattle it off as quick as I can. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know something tonight of the love of God, don't you? Then the Bible has a lot to say concerning the mercy of God. Because you know, friend, tonight it is but for the Lord's mercies that you're not consumed. It's the Lord's mercies tonight that has kept you alive. It's according to the Lord's mercies tonight that you're not in hell already. Let me say this tonight. It's the Lord's mercies that you're in this gospel meeting to hear the greatest message that sinners need to hear. It is but for the Lord's mercy we are not concerned. The Bible has a lot to say not only about the love of God and the mercy of God, sure the Bible has a lot to say of the grace of God. What does the Bible say in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9? It says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the Bible tonight has a lot to say about the grace of God. George McConnell is what he is tonight. By the grace of God, 
No religious tradition has done anything for me. Being baptized as a baby didn't do anything for me. Being confirmed didn't do anything for me. I am what I am tonight by the grace of God. His love, His mercy, His grace. My text tonight brings a different view. Not too many preachers preach on. Not too many people are warned about. I want to take as my text tonight the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. I'm just going to read the text tonight. Listen to what it says. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's my text tonight. And that's the text tonight that the Lord has laid upon my heart for this meeting. Knowing, therefore, not the love of the Lord, not the mercy of the Lord, not the grace of the Lord, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. In these closing moments, I want to draw your thoughts by the help of God the Holy Spirit to bring you God's message from that text tonight, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Something, first of all, is very clear about that text tonight. It's the sureness of the text. Because the writer says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. The man who penned that verse tonight, the man who penned those words, teaches us a lesson tonight that the terror of the Lord is as real as His love. The terror of the Lord is as real as His mercy. The terror of the Lord is as real as His grief. The terror of the Lord. You know, my dear unsafe friend tonight, you face the terror of the Lord. Tonight, the terror of the Lord could burst upon your Christless head, and not one thing will stop it. You know, friend, this evening, I know tonight much about the love of God. And you and I know much about the mercy of God, and you and I know much about the grace of God. Ah, but I think we know very little about the terror of the Lord. In the Old Testament book of the prophet Joel, in Joel chapter 2, verse 31, it talks about a day when this world is going to suffer the terror of the, wor terror of the Lord. Do you know what Joel chapter 2, verse 31 says? It says that this world faces the great and terrible day of the Lord. And there's a great and terrible day coming to this world, friends. And the terror of the Lord is as sure tonight as the love of God. And I'll tell you something else, friend. There's a whole pile of people tonight and they have a whole false view of God. They think God is some softy. 
to think the Lord is someone who doesn't care, and the Lord turns a blind eye and evil. I'll tell you, the Lord doesn't turn a blind eye and evil at all. The Bible says in this world and according to this world, let me tell you, no matter what goes on in this world today, do you know what the Bible teaches? The judge of all the earth shall do right. And this world of ours faces, fast faces the judgment of God tonight. Man thinks tonight he can mock God. Man thinks he can talk to God whatever way he wants. But do you know what the book of Proverbs chapter 1 teaches me? Man may mock God, but the day will come when God will mock man. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, where God says, I will mock you when your fear cometh upon you. Did you ever think, love, the day will come when God will mock men? Man thinks he can laugh at God. And you know what Psalm 2 verse 4 says? Psalm 2 verse 4 says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> Man thinks he can laugh at God and get away with it. I'll tell you, friend, tonight, no man will laugh at God and get away with it this evening. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. And sinner, friend, tonight in this meeting, you face tonight this tragic terror, terror of the Lord. But I want you to notice that text. Secondly, there's the, there's the sureness of this text. There's the solemnness of this text, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. The terror of the Lord tonight. Unsaved people fail to realize the terror of the Lord. Friend, tonight, if you die unsaved tonight, and you could die unsaved, you'll know then what the terror of the Lord's like. And if you, if the Lord was to come back tonight, and the church was raptured, and you're left behind, I'll tell you, you'll soon know the terror of the Lord when you're left behind. Mind you tonight, dear unsafe friend, the Lord could come back tonight. At such an hour as ye think not, the Lord could come. And tonight, if the Lord came tonight, you'd be left behind. And every Christian will disappear into the air of the be with the Lord. And you'll be left behind. And I'll tell you, this world is fast heading for judgment. Fast heading for judgment. I want to tell you something tonight. Here's what's happening to you. Do you see you right now? The hand of God's mercy is holding on to you. Right now, sinner friend, you are dangling over the very pit of hell, and it's God's hand of mercy that's holding you out of it. It's God's hand of mercy that's keeping you out of it, friend. And someday... Someday that hand of mercy is going to let you go. That hand of mercy that's holding you, that hand of mercy that's keeping you, is going to let you go and become to you a hand of judgment. When you face the terror of the Lord, you'll find this tonight. You'll find this. Do you see if you die unsafe? If you die in your sin, do you know the first thing you're going to find out the moment you die? Hebrews 10, 31. You know what Hebrews 10, 31 says? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The death of every sinner, the death of every unsaved, will experience that tonight and has. 
It's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. And tonight, the forgiveness that the Lord has for you could soon be withdrawn and the hand of his fury will come upon you. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. There's more nonsense talked at wakes than anywhere else. And there's more lies told at funerals than anywhere else. And they're told in pulpits. And they're told at gravesides. A person who dies unsaved doesn't go to heaven. A person who dies unsaved and out of Christ goes to hell tonight. The Lord Jesus says, if ye die in your sins, and it doesn't matter whether you go to a Baptist church or a Free Presbyterian church or a Methodist, for God doesn't give two hoots where you go. When it comes to the judgment bar, I'll tell you, friend, if you die without Christ tonight, you'll find it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 makes it clear tonight. We all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And that verse teaches you tonight where you stand with God, you've come short tonight. I want you not to listen to George McConnell. I want you to listen to the Lord. I'm going to read you three verses. And these are not my words. They're the Lord's. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4. My fury shall come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it against the evil of your doing. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 8 tonight, Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, he says, I will not hear. Oh, there'll come a time on safe, friend. You'll cry out for mercy, but mercy won't be found. There'll come a time when you will cry and God will close his ear. As God says, I won't have any pity. Can you imagine tonight, friends, facing the terror of the Lord? There'll come a time when you'll cry for mercy. And there'll come a time when you'll cry for pity. But mercy and pity will be that far from you. God in divine judgment will trample you under his feet. Isaiah 63 and 6, he says, I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury. Many experience it tonight. Do you know, friend, tonight there's people tonight in hell who would give everything to be sitting where you are just to have one final chance, just to have one more chance tonight. Tonight they're there in hell and torments. 
the terror of the Lord in a lost sinner's hell, where no mercy and where no pity can be found. And they'll do anything, and they would give anything. Friend, they'll be sitting in that pew where you are to have one more chance. And tonight, where you sit, it could be you'll be where they'll be tomorrow. I want to say this in love tonight. Your damnation will not slumber. It's all possible tonight. It will come swiftly and without warning. Nothing tonight has outwitted man. Nothing has outwitted woman. Nothing has outwitted any person more so than death. Death has outwitted a lot of people. Young girl, last Friday week ago, 27 years of age in Five Mile Town, getting married in October time, went to the gym in Colebrook, got onto the treadmill. She wasn't on the treadmill five minutes, friends, and she collapsed dead, and she was dead before she hit the ground. 27 years of age. Little did she know that her funeral would come before her wedding. And last Tuesday, Tuesday week ago, she was buried in her wedding dress. Death outwitted her. Yesterday evening, about half past six, Nigel Murray, a man a year or two older than me at school, was gored to death by a bull in his own farmyard. Nigel last yesterday morning didn't think that that was going to be the last day of his life on earth. Nothing has outwitted men and women more than death. And I'm saying this tonight with all love, damnation of yours will not slumber. In all possibility, it'll be swift. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. I'm not up here tonight to soft soap you. I'm up here to tell you the truth. But I don't want to end in the terror of the Lord tonight. Thank God there's a lovely wee phrase at the last. Therefore, we persuade men. That's the sweetness of the text, isn't it? You know, that's my calling and that's my duty. And it ought to be the calling and the duty of every pastor. And it ought to be the calling and the duty of every clergyman. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade men to do what? We persuade men to repent of their sin. The Lord Jesus said twice, If ye repent not, ye shall all likewise perish. Tonight I want you, and I plead with you, and I persuade you to run to Christ tonight. Come to Christ tonight, who died for you on the cross and shed his blood. And flee from the wrath to come, because the Christ of Calvary is the only Savior tonight that can save your never-dying soul. Oh, the mercy that spares you! But oh, the grace that can save you tonight, would you come to Christ? Make him yours. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men to be saved tonight. We persuade you tonight to repent of sin and get any old silly notion that your good works is good enough for the not. Come to Christ tonight. He's the only Savior of sinners. Plunge beneath the crimson tide of His precious blood. 
Flee to his arms of mercy while in mercy is calling. Seek ye the Lord tonight while he can be found. Call upon him while he is near, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. That's why we persuade men. Let's all bow in prayer together, please. Friend, this could be the last night, last Sunday night you'll ever see, the last chance you may have. You come to the Savior tonight. God's hand of mercy just might let you go in half an hour's time. And once God's hand of mercy lets you go, there's not a thing you can do, dear. Not a thing you can do, sir. And that's why I'm asking you now tonight, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. It is a fearful thing. Aye, a fearful thing fall into the hands of the living God. Lord, tonight we just ask Thee to give the saving grace. We turn the eternal issues of this meeting over to Thee. In Jesus' name, amen. We're not going to sing any more tonight. I think that's been a solemn enough meeting. We're not going to, we're not going to spoil it. <laughs>